to nuts. From the Jobbing.com Arena in Glendale, California, or Arizona rather, it is the Leafs and the Phoenix Coyotes going at one another for the second time this season, the second and final meeting between these two teams. Just the fourth time the Leafs have played in this new facility in Glendale. As it is cleared in and an offside at the Toronto Blue Line. The constables of the court of cop cars tonight brought to you by Intact Insurance, you're back. Jonathan Bernier is 2-0-0 lifetime against the Coyotes with a spectacular 0.80 goals against average. Mike Smith, 3-0-2 against the Leafs lifetime, 2.10 his goals against average. These two teams finished in a 1-1 tie and then it was a controversial shootout win for the Maple Leafs on a goal that had to be reviewed in the shootout as it is played back down into the coyote zone to start here and a long lead pass at center for vermette he gets it into the toronto zone carl gunnerson swinging it around on the boards kessel couldn't extricate it there gleason after it a little on the wall it comes along for bodker now banking it along the boards again for vermette vermette tied up there by gleason and the puck is rattled off a stick of McCulloch down into Phoenix territory. Smith, who handles the puck as well as any goaltender in this league, set it up and it was quickly steered back into the Toronto zone. I would go a bit further, better than any goaltender in this league. He is absolutely incredible handling the puck. Down the boards comes Kadri. Kadri and Lupo. Lupo into the corner trying to curl out. The pass into the slot was in behind Franson and now comes into the center ice area. Lupo backing up that pinch though as it is cleared into the Toronto zone. Lupo again on the right wing. Diagonal shoot in for Kadri. Kadri to the half boards. A nice speed for a shot there taken by Kuhlman that went wide. Gardner plays it back into the corner. Off the boards to the line, but not out. And it bounces high into the air, and it'll be David Schlemko going back to retrieve it. Schlemko back of the net as both teams are changing on the go as we approach two minutes played here in the first period. Up on the right side for David Moss. He pushed it in over the line, but Morgan Riley's able to get there with Tim Kennedy in tow. Bouncing puck that Peter Holland couldn't make a move on. Now it comes back to the blue line, and it's a glove pass that is going to be whistled down by the linesman, Brian Mock, who is from Little Falls, Minnesota, joined by Ben Cleek Hill, Steve Barton, referees Eric Ferlat, and Mike Hasenfratz. Yeah, the both teams' special teams are very even in this game in terms of Phoenix Coyotes there, ninth, and the Toronto Maple Leafs fourth, and the PK is about even so five on five play is going to be very important in this game tonight that's where the phoenix coyotes have the edge and a real good play by hall we just saw filling in in a five on five situation or rolls it in over the line michael stone played it into the slot jeff halpern will get it out into the center ice area for phoenix and chipchura sends it the rest of the way bernier Playing it back along for Riley, who quickly gets it up on the wing and oar. Gets it ahead for Carter Ashton. Ashton breaking it on goal! And Smith stopped him in the net. Is dislodged in behind the Phoenix goaltender as Carter Ashton showed you some great speed there. Breaking in on a nice little feed through the middle. And that's what you like about Carter Ashton here is when he takes off that extra gear. We want to see more of that from him. And if you're a Leaf fan, because he could... He can take off with speed, and when he does with this big frame, he can be very difficult to haul down. Protects the puck well there, and a beautiful play by Smith to stay right with him, cover up the five hole, make a nice save. Carter Ashton had 10 goals in his previous 12 Marley games before being recalled. He's still looking for his first National Hockey League goal. I think it's his fair dad to say. had a few of them. Yeah, he's a bit of a tweener still, and that's something that every time he comes up, he plays a little bit better at this level. Rolling pass in front of the net by Kessel. No one there to tap it home. And it is Van Riemsdyk back in his own zone for France and on to Gleason. Gleason gets it ahead, and Kessel's across the line. Kessel, a little stutter step, tried to send it back to Gleason. Now double teamed along the boards is Kessel. It comes back to Gleason. He looks for Franson. Franson's wrist shot is right on. Blocking arm saved by Smith. Played out at center ice by Phoenix. Cody Franson back pedals into his own zone. He'll start out slowly. 
And gives Timmy Gleason the puck up ahead for Van Riemsdyk. Change is coming for Randy Carlisle's team. No score early here in first period action from Phoenix. McCulloch, a pass ahead at center and down into the Toronto zone. Icing is waved off. Gunnarsson ties his man up. The puck comes free. Gunnarsson trying to get it out but could not. Now well, they have it in their skates and Kuhlman trying to fish it out but it's kept alive by Verbata. Into the corner for Doan. Verbata curls out of the corner. Back to the point. And a shot by Schlemko went off the stick of Bernier Watt. Gunnarsson. Up the middle it goes to Kadri and they've got a defenseman trapped as it's played ahead. Lupo missing a hit there as it comes into the center ice area. Now Doan chasing down a loose puck in the zone. Verbata's gone to the front of the net. Doan pulls up back to the point of drive and Keith Yandel blew it wide of the net. Michael Stone keeping it in. Gardner couldn't knock it down. Pinup has it go off him. Verbata with it back to the point. Yandel's shot is wide again. Coyotes playing it into the corner, and Kadri being pressured now, plays it around behind the goal. Fanuk up on the near side for Lupo, and he'll tip it into the center ice area. Change for the Leafs. Across the line for David Boston, a goal! And the chance there by Klinkhammer was stopped by Bernier. Nice play by Moss, and Klinkhammer went right to the net. Gardner back for Riley. Up ahead for Lupul and tipped on now for Peter Holland. Holland will flip it in as Lupul heads to the bench. No score first period here in Phoenix. And we're glad you're along with us here on Leafs TV. Cody Franson backpedals. Got it ahead for Holland. Holland a little spinning move but was too well covered. Now brought on by Phoenix to the line and dumped in on goal and Bernier comes out to catch that on the chest and will hold for a face-off. First good chance for the Phoenix Coyotes is a result of a horrible change here by the Maple Leafs. You'll see Dion Phaneuf go right over and all five went out as well and then Lupul changes his mind too late and that's why Bernier had to make an excellent first tough save of the game for him. Bernier's won his last three starts. He's been involved in 17 of the last 21 Leaf games as he stakes claim to the number one job. A draw to his left. I would imagine we'll see Reimer tomorrow night in Colorado. At the point, a long shot. Pad save and smothered by Bernier. And there'll be a face-off again in the same circle to his left. The first period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Glendale, Arizona is brought to you by Proline. Get way into the game. By Purolator. Excitement delivered. By Five Hour Energy, it's quick, simple, and made to help hard-working people. And by Ford, go further. Tonight starts a streak of 10 games in 20 nights. And uh, the Maple Leafs embarking on a four-game Western Conference road trip with stops in Colorado, as you mentioned. And then Dallas, and then finally Winnipeg on Saturday night. Gunnarsson couldn't come out with it. Here are the Coyotes back to the point. McCulloch shot is steered wide by Bernier. Down the birds it comes. Ekman Larson trying to center. He did. It's still free in front of the net. And it comes off under the near side. Coyotes with Bodker back to the blue line. But it's intercepted and brought out now by the Maple Leafs. And Kessel comes to the line and in. Bouncing puck. And they're going to call this offside as it went off a stick and came up and may have hit Kessel in the base. One thing that the Phoenix Coyotes do very well is they can join the attack, in particular Ekman Larson, and of course Yandel's had a tremendous year for the Phoenix Coyotes as well. And as Leaf players, you better look over your shoulder and make sure, because they are going to join the attack in a real hurry. And Larson's probably their best young defenseman. Look at the plus minus is a plus. 15 on this team that's been up and down all season long here in Phoenix. 20 or more points in his last three games. Keith Yandel is minus 13, but Ekman Larson plus seven at this point in the season. Down into the corner it goes. Schwartz going around back of the net. Trying to look for a man. It comes back to the blue line. Morris sends it off on the far side. Long shot in traffic. It's not, there's a rebound. And unable to get his stick extricated there at the last second. Coming in front of the net was Jordan Schwartz, the Burlington native. Played out into the center ice area. Slenko. As I mentioned, the plus 15's on his career.
Joe. You're right. All right. I wasn't throwing you under the bus there. A little bit, but you know, I deserved it. No, no. Here's a shot that went off the side of the goal. Get back up, though. He just, no. just once. No, it was just one tire, too. I could have got two tires there. It was a Winnebago. <laughs> no, I deserved it. That's all right. Down on the boards. Actually, it wasn't paying attention. <laughs> We do eat our young. <laughs> yes, we do. Here's a chance now for Holland. Two on one. Holland going to the net and a pass. And Bodie couldn't get his stick on the puck as he went hard to the net. Offside as Raymond was late getting out of the offensive end. The Leafs with a great scoring chance. Troy Bodie couldn't make contact. And be involved in that manner. And when he plays like that, he can be an awful, effective young hockey player. Okay. Well, and the other thing he was doing, Greg, was going north-south. Not so much of the stop-up. It was driving the net, driving into corners, driving the puck in deep. And then, of course, with his great hands and vision, as you mentioned, uh, two very impressive assists. But he has to do that more consistently. As a lead pass brings Kessel, his shot is blocked by Smith and held for a face-off in the phoenix zone and i know fans don't want to hear this they're impatient but with a young player like kadri it takes time and it's going to take time for him to develop so you see more of that in a consistent basis smith with a couple of easy saves other than the breakaway to get into this game and every time you shoot the puck towards him he is going to look on the offense and as you remember in toronto he sent a player in a breakaway with a beautiful pass when everybody was standing still waiting for him to freeze the puck now, having said that, he does have oversized gloves and a large stick. And sometimes he gets himself into trouble when he tries to do too much with handling the puck. And we've seen that as well. Absolutely, but you'll take it because I've never seen a guy fire the puck like this guy. I don't think ever in the National Hockey League. That's how well he shoots it. And that's quite a statement. There's been a lot of good puck handling goalies. That guy in New Jersey wasn't bad. Yeah, but in a different way. <laughs> yeah. In a different oh, way. No. He was yep. an intelligent puck mover. Yep. He could shoot it, but not like Smith. Yandel now carrying in, goes to the side of the goal. A shot is stopped by Bernier on the short side. Played into the far corner. Yandel with a nice rush there as it's played back along the board by Plinkhammer. And it is picked off now, and Gardner starts out of his own zone. Gardner waiting for Lupel to turn, got it ahead, and now Cadbury gets it across the line and forces it into the corner. Tim Kennedy is there for Phoenix. Drops it back again for Michael Stone, and out at center ice it comes. Kennedy in on the right wing, trying to flip it in front. That deflected off Riley and off the glass. Controlled again by Klinkhammer, back to the blue line, a long shot off the glass in behind the Toronto goal. Centering pass, deflects to the line and out off the stick of Kessel. Leafs nothing and the Coyotes nothing here as we approach the midway point of the first period. Gleason tipped it back of the net but not very far. Now a quick shot from a sharp angle knocked away off the glove of Bernier and it's brought by Van Riemsdyk the center. Van Riemsdyk in on the left wing driving as he sends it in on the backhand and that was up in the rebound but stick handled ever so adroitly by Oliver Ekman Larson just wide of the post. There's a drive by Franson that went wide. Gleason keeps it in for Toronto. Against the boards, Kessel trying to come out. He's got a man in front, and he couldn't get the puck to Bozak. Off the boards now for Bodker. Can't get it out. Gleason's drive is right on. No rebound, though, as Smith is able to glove it. Good puck recovery here by the big line, and we've seen a lot of this the last couple of weeks as they have regained form. And a good shoot in here that gets around the horn, but Gleason keeps it alive. And this is where the backside pressure has been very effective for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Big line, Kessel with good support. And although that doesn't work, they're all over the puck and doing a real nice job. And there's Gleason pulling it across the blue line to change the angle so we can get the puck through the block shot attempts. Off a stick to center ice, it comes to Verbata. He plays it down into the Toronto zone. Bernier pumped it back, Verbata cuts it off. Centering pass off a stick and two leads break the center. Orr getting it up on the left wing. And it is launched into the zone by Carter Ashton. Orr went in after it, but Smith played it away from him. Near side for Adam Verbata. Dropping it back, Schlemko will bounce it down into the Toronto end. Dion Fanuk 
On the backhand, unable to get it out was Bodie at the point. Yandel sends it around to the near corner. Coyotes taking a glance as it comes back off the wing, but cut off by Mason Raymond. Raymond to Bodie. Troy Bodie in over the line. Bodie with a little stick handling move to get it to Raymond. Raymond in tight quarters with a shot. Sharp angle save made there by Smith. Played up onto the right wing side, and out come the Coyotes with Captain Shane Doan launching it on the backhand into the Toronto zone. Nine minutes, 43 seconds to go. First period, Joe Bowen along with Greg Millen and our intrepid reporter at ice level one, Paul Hendrick Esquire. I've uh, been asked by the truck to ask about the rest of the guys who are here, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple. Yeah, them, too. <laughs> yeah, those and the other guys. Here's Gardner playing it up on the right wing side. Oh, a hit there. Spins Riley into the sideboards there with a pretty good hit as he was trying to find the puck. Schlemko backhands it back down into the Toronto zone. We may have a radio version of this game very quickly if we don't make the boys in the truck happy. Schlemko back in his own zone. Banks it off now for Derek Morris. Morris got it ahead. Moss, who is the first cousin of uh, Phil Kessel, works along the boards, keeping it in. David Moss, they bang in there as Franson arrives on the scene. A pass to the other side. Yandel's shot was blocked by Kuhleman, and Kuhleman is able to get it ahead, and now here is a play made by Lupel to get it down into the zone. Icing waved off. Yandel goes back to recover the puck. Yandel, a blown tire there. Kessel frees it up for Bozak. Bozak stretching things out, looking for a man in front. And it comes into the slot. Kessel couldn't get a shot. And now out come the Phoenix Coyotes. Back checking pressure there by Bozak. Disrupts the rush. Now a man in front of the net. A shot. They score. No. Oh, I don't know. We're going to have to look at that. That's, that looked in from here, but so we're a long good, way away. Didn't it? Now here's Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk in the corner. Around back of the net. Bozak plays it into the corner. Comes out in front. Well down to Smith to make the save. That crossbar we're saying at the truck. Well, the ref was right there. He had a much better look than we did. Boy, that looked in from here, didn't it? Yeah. Gardner off the boards and into the zone. There was no celebration by the Phoenix Coyotes, however which would have led you to believe that they were questioning it. Tim Kennedy into the area back of the net. Dug out by Doan, centering pass, and Schlemko couldn't get a shot away. Reversed now for Fanuf. Bank pass, blocked. Fanuf kicks it ahead. Bodie gets it elevated, and it's into the center ice area. Long stretch without a whistle. If they did say that was a goal, this game may take till midnight to complete. <laughs> Up on the left wing side for Troy Bodie. Bodie's backhand is weak and wide. Peter Holland recovers the puck, trying to send it in deep, but it's intercepted, and Verbata starts away with a pass on the left wing for Jeff Halpern. Halpern has stood up. Puck along the boards as Gardner takes his man down. Here's Keith Gandle trying to find an outlet. A pass back into the slot. The drive is whistled over top of the goal. A rebound back to Yandel again. Shot deflects just wide of the far post. Back to the blue line, and it's going to bounce past Yandel and come all the way down into the Phoenix zone. 6.14 to go here in a quickly played first period. We've gone over three minutes without a stoppage of play. Right in over the line by Jordan Schwartz. Leap Nation in uh, good numbers here in the vacation area of Arizona. A lot of snowbirds here tonight as Ashton gets it in front of the net. But Jay McClement had gone past the front of the goal. Brought back the other way by David Moss. And it's offside at the Toronto Blue Line. Here is video evidence that it went off the crossbar. Well, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, their big line's going, and they have had a good start to this game and keep the puck away from Mike Smith. We've talked about his puck handling abilities. He has to be good the way he's been the last couple of games as Smith was in a bit of a funk after being named to the Canadian Olympic team. 
And we mentioned the five on five play where the Phoenix Coyotes hold an edge and the special teams are pretty even by on both sides. Interesting today, of course, John Tortorella suspended for 15 days, which is six games. It, I remember one other great coaches battle that happened between the Red Wings and the Maple Leafs when John Brophy was uh, getting it from Jacques Demers, who wanted to climb over the glass that kept the two teams apart. And half the Red Wing bench was yelling, let him go, let him go. Hey, Joe, how about Harry Neal, our good buddy, back in Quebec City with Vancouver? Yes, yeah, he was suspended because he waded into the crowd after some guy who had dropped a beer on his head. When we get back home, we'll have to talk to Harry about that little episode. That was 10 games. And Roger Nielsen took over, and guess what? They went to the Stanley Cup final. Roger told him, he said, All right, if you hadn't gotten suspended, we wouldn't have got to the Stanley Cup final. And Harry said, if I hadn't gotten suspended, we would have won. Into the far corner now for Ekman Larson. Played ahead on the right wing side. Over the line then by Vermette. Stolen by the Leafs. And then look out! I'm not sure Smith saw that till the last second as it went wide. Enough. Got ahead for Kadri. Couldn't get it into the zone. Gunnarsson tries the near side for Raymond. Raymond steers it into the corner. Smith out of the goal to pump it on the glass, and it escapes the center ice. Leafs are regrouping in their own zone. Gardner had some difficulties with it. Around back of the goal, a centering pass. Gardner with a couple of little touch passes, and that springs Kessel. Kessel works in on the wing and stops. Looks for a man, still has it. Now tries to play it into the corner. Kadri. Raymond behind the goal. Double team, got it freed for Kessel. Nice move to get it into the slot, but it comes out into the center rights area. 3.50 to play, first period, no score. Side of the goal, it comes in front, scores! Jake Gardner gets a gift! Wrapped in the front of the net, Kadri was there as well! And Phil Kessel took a big time hit to make a play in the corner. And then Gardner, who has been doing a little more of this, jumps in, but it's Kessel that keeps the puck alive, first of all, and then it goes back on the counterattack. The Leafs get out of the zone, Gardner takes off, and he'll throw it around. Now here's Kessel, the left of your frame, and he takes a big time hit to get it out in front, and then Gardner, after shooting it initially, he'll just go right to the front of the net, in front of the Phoenix County's defenseman, Yandel, who's fishing for the puck. That leaves Gardner wide open. And here's where Kessel takes this hit to make the play to get the puck in front of the net. So Jake Gardner gets his fourth goal of the season. And the Maple Leafs jump out on top here, one to nothing. Played to the line, a bouncing puck. Gunnarsson plays it in around back of the net. Bodie gets there along with Jay McClemon. McClemon trying to restore it. Played on the backhand, but not out. A long shot, steered wide of the net by Smith as it comes high into the air. Bodie trying to settle it down, got a shot away. Now he gets another one, and it's stopped on the short side by Kingston native Mike Smith. <laughs> the line's been blocked, that, and then Nikolai Kuhlman hammered it between the poor linesman's legs. Long shot into Bernier's chest by Shane Doan is smothered. Jake Gardner's fourth of the year. And the Maple Leafs have a 1-0 lead. Leafs TV broadcast from Glendale, Arizona is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan, and proud partner of the Leafs. So on our opening, some fans from McTeer are in attendance. A little community south of Perry Sound. They're enjoying the game. A draw to the left of Bernier. Controlled by... Chip Chura, Chip Chura gets it back to the point. McCulloch with a shot that's well wide of the net. Down the boards is Ekman Larson. He centers, but it's picked off there and brought out by Jay McClement. Up ahead for Lupo. Lupo trying to go wide on the defense. Sharp bangle shot. Smith hugging the post, took it on the chest and deflects it into the corner. McCulloch 
I'll play it into the crowd, and everybody gets to point, and I think accurately, it's going to be a penalty. Pollock has gone to the penalty box for delay of game. And no argument there at all. He just skated right towards the box. Puck rolling on him. He just tries to, tries to throw it off the glass, and when it rolls up on his stick, it goes right over the glass, and clearly the puck is rolling, and he knew it right away. 17.36, the time of the penalty. The Leafs 5 of 16 in their last five games. On the power play, and the faceoff coming to the right of Smith, and all Leaf power plays on our broadcast on Leafs TV tonight from Glendale, brought to you by Just Energy. As the shot just went wide, energy made easy. Kessel backhands to the side of the goal and center. Franson can't shoot it. Franson into the corner. Back to the blue line and it went right past Tyler Bozak and down the ice. I think Bozak thought someone was in behind him at the point and let that go. Franson was intending it for him, but there was no one at the blue line to keep it in. Van Riemsdyk in for Fanuf. Fanuf with a sharp angle shot. That stopped. Franson traps this at the line. Near side for Kessel. Kessel holds. Got away from one check. Now took a shot. Scores! Phil Kessel with a great screen in front of the net. And it's 2-0 Toronto. This hit something on the way in. It might have been Van Riemsdyk's stick. It's from up here. I could actually hear it. But it starts with Phaneuf entering the zone with a pretty rush. And a give and go. Right here as he keeps the puck in, and here's the goal. Now Franson to Kessel. Kessel with a nice inside out move, throws it towards the net. And that either hits Smith on the way in, or off his stick, or Van Riemsdyk, who was doing a nice job in front screening the goaltender. So and the reason why this power play is so effective is because Kessel is a one shot artist from this half boards. He can beat you from there with the help of Van Riemsdyk. And if you take Kessel, that opens up the point and the cross seam pass to the man on the other side of the power play. And that's really been an effective play for the Toronto Maple Leafs situation all season long. So at 18-19, the Leafs score a power play goal to make it two to nothing. At this point, it is Kessel's. And that would extend a goal scoring streak to three games and a point scoring streak already extended now to six games. He's got 12 points for the goal and an assist here tonight. And he's had a terrific start to this game also. Icing call That's coming as Gleason strides back. And less than a minute to go in the period. Kessel from Franson is the official scoring play here for Toronto. And Kessel climbing the ladder in terms of goal scoring the last five years in the National Hockey League. That is an impressive stat. You look at Kessel's game tonight, he takes a hit to make a play on the first goal, and then he scores a power play goal to make it 2 nothing. The draw to the right of Mike Smith, scrummed and carried out now by Radim Verbata, who got it to Doan. Doan across the line, trying to follow up on it, fed it in for Verbata. Gleason takes him into the corner, and the puck comes free, and Mason Raymond starts away with it. Here's the former Vancouver Canuck coming to center and across the line with Peter Holland. Holland able to drag it in a little bit, but it is pushed ahead then by Vermette. And the Coyotes will get it down into the Toronto zone. Korpikoski around on the far side. Ekman Larson stretches it out, fed it back of the net. Let go there for Raymond on the near wing. 22 seconds left in the period. Back to the point it comes. McCulloch into the slot. Ekman Larson with the pass and the shot. And the glove save made by Bernier as Ekman Larson gets snowed under by Troy Bodie on the far side after letting that shot go. Well, one thing for Bernier all game long, he's been able to see the puck as the Leafs have done a nice job boxing out the Coyotes not to not get in front of Bernier. And when he sees the puck, very rarely does he give a rebound out. And he has not given any rebounds at all out in this first period. Face off coming to the right of Bernier. And the draw controlled by Toronto. Snapped around the boards by Gunnarsson. Now the fight is on along the near side to get it out. Bozak against the wall. Four seconds left in the period. Gunnarsson takes his man, clink hammer to the boards, and that will do it. A solid road period for the boys in white and blue. 
Jake Gardner's fourth from Kessel and Kadri. Then Kessel on the power play, his 24th of the season from Franson at 18-19. And the Maple Leafs carry a 2-0 lead into the dressing room after 20 minutes of play. So the Maple Leafs exactly what the doctor ordered here in the first period to get a lead on a very tight checking normally. Phoenix Coyota group, and that's the way you want to play against them. 14-12, the shots favor the Leafs. Let's go downstairs to Paul. Second straight game, second straight great start for the Maple Leafs here tonight. Simple concept, it seems, just get shots on net. The puck's really bouncing out there. Yeah, that's what we've been focusing on a lot is uh, the great starts, and um, we've been lucky enough to get a few lately. We've been trying to prepare a little bit more and um, focus on some things, get some pucks to the net. Our power play's been hot, and, um, and you know, everyone's been doing a good job. Most of your goals, Jake, are usually finding a shooting lane and going from there just below the blue line. What did you see tonight that enabled you to go to the net and get that goal? I was actually pinching, I think, and I uh, just put it behind the net. I saw Phil was going to try and put it in front, and uh, he was originally going to Nas, but it slipped through, and I was able to get a, get a stick on it, and I don't think Smith really expected the shot, so uh, I was lucky enough to get a goal. All right, thank you. Thanks. Jake Gardner, the Leafs' next three games brought to you by Bohan. Get way into the game. Here is the television schedule as follows. Right back to work tomorrow night in Denver on Sportsnet. Thursday in Dallas on TSN. Saturday on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada as the Leafs take on the Winnipeg Jets. As far as radio is concerned, over the course of the next three games, TSN 1050 Toronto tomorrow. Thursday from Dallas, Sportsnet 590 The Fan. And then on Saturday, TSN 1050 Toronto. Jake Gardner with his fourth of the season. The Leafs up by two. You're watching Molson Canadian Leafs hockey from Glendale, Arizona. Nothing Toronto lead to take to the second period. And Phil Kessel, who has been the hottest of the Maple Leafs, now with a six-game point streak. Three goals, seven assists. Or excuse me, uh, four goals, eight assists for 12 points. As it is pushed into the zone, but Phil Kessel has not returned to the Leaf bench to start this uh, second period as of late. Long shot in on Bernier. He took that big hit before the goal was scored. It may have something. Now we see Kessel coming out of the walkway and heading to the bench. So, just uh, making a uh, nice little entrance. There's a shot by Franson that is blocked. And it is cleared up on the wing and kept alive then by Bernier, who plays it on the far side. Fashionably late, as my wife would say. Played around back of the net. Now here's Raymond. Trying to center, he did. Lupel didn't see it. It was in behind him, and it's cleared by the Coyotes to center and shot right back in. And here's Kessel back into the game and in over the boards with Kadri on a line. And Van Riemsdyk. So Randy Carlisle doing a little juggling here. And uh, Kadri being rewarded, I guess, for his improved play. And here's the hit from the first period where I think he got it right in the face more than anything else on the play. And he seems to be fine. I wonder if he got stitched up maybe, but I... Don't see anything no, I don't see marked any, that way. No, nope. didn't see any blood at the time. It was any fashionably late. Yeah. Just to get everybody to talk. Since he doesn't, he might as well have somebody else do it. <laughs> you should have seen the moves he put on oh, me today. I, well, you know we what? We were I'm, laughing at each other. I've seen that. He can hide from you. Oh, he's good. Oh, I know he is. And you know what? It, it's just him, yep. isn't it? He's just, he hates that part of the game. And then when you think about it, he decides that he likes to stay in Toronto. He loves the city and this organization that much, despite all of the media that he hates terribly. He's going to stay on for a number of more years. Yeah, and you know, you get him away from a camera, one of the most personable guys going, and uh, just, that's just Phil. Well, Phil Sr. will be on the trip in another uh, couple of weeks. We'll talk to him about straightening things up. Yep, yep, yep. Take a look at what he's done as far as his career here. Here's a chance now on a drive that's deflected wide of the net by Verbata. And is there a penalty coming here? Yes. Interference is the call. And Dion Phaneuf is uh, questioning it, so I'm assuming it will be him that is going to the penalty box. It's on Klinkhammer in front of the net as he just 
there, puts his stick parallel enough to draw the penalty. And holds up Clink Hammer there. And who's grabbing who? But anytime you get that stick up parallel, like Fanuf did there to the opposition's body, you're going to usually get it, whether you like the call or not. So it comes at 131. And the Leafs are a man short. Phoenix is well with power play goals in seven consecutive games. They've been good in that department. They are doing a little repair work, as you see, at the goal post in the Toronto end. Bernier says it's uh, to his liking. A little nourishment, and he's ready to go with the first power play of the game for the Coyotes. Jay McClement, who has taken the fourth most face-offs while shorthanded, wins that one cleanly and sends it out and down the ice. That is in the league. Against Vermette, who's 56.3% on the draw and leagues the league in shorthanded one face-off. At the blue line, Doan gets it down on the boards, cut off there by Carl Gunnarsson, and launched down the boards and down the ice. Change of penalty killers for Toronto. Brought out now by Ekman Larson to center. He drops it back at the blue line. Brought over the line by Vermette. Dished off and back to the blue line for Yandel. Ekman Larson in with a shot. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. It didn't go in. That's two. Tonight, one in the first period. And now here, one early in period number two. And off the crossbar and post and into the screen. Listen to this. And Doan was doing a terrific job screening Bernier, and he cut across just as the puck came towards the goal. And Bernier never saw it in a break for the Leafs. Face off to the left behind Bernier. And it is fired around the boards by Cody Franson and unable to get to it, Keith Yandel. Smith thinks about playing on and does. Verbata has to curl back in his own end anyway. Now Yandel carries it out. Onto the wing on the near side and in over the line. Brought by Mike Ribeiro. A uh, stick in the face of Gunnarsson goes down and a penalty is going to come here to the Phoenix Coyotes. And so that will negate their power play and it will send the Leafs to an abbreviated 109 when the penalty to Fanuf is up. So the initial play here by Gunnarsson and then a little hook back afterwards and a terrible looking stick there. Oh man. 240 the time of the penalty. And right in the jaw. And uh, not cut. And it doesn't appear that he has uh, been cut anyway, but uh, nonetheless, no much uh, not much fun. Ribeiro in the box. So four on four hockey here for a little bit. That stretch of time. Played back to the blue line and Gardner could not keep that puck in. Four on four this year. The Leafs are two goals, four, two against. Phoenix five, four and five against. Which would include overtime markers as well. Down into the Toronto zone. Gardner around back of the net being chased. By Kennedy drops it back for Franson. He waits for things to clear before starting out of his own zone slowly. He hits the red line onto the wing for Gardner. Gardner into the slot and looked for a pass for Lupo, but it was deflected up into the screen away from the Leaf winger. Intact Insurance Company, the choice of most Canadians for their home and auto insurance. Intact Insurance, you're back. So the faceoff is outside the blue line. He must have gone off Lupo and into the screen because they brought the faceoff out of the zone. Bozak wins it. Morgan Riley dishes it off. Gardner gives it back to him. Riley being forced by David Moss now carries through the neutral zone and in. He'll play it around the boards to the near side. Bozak lets it go and it comes back to the blue line. Tried to bat it in there. Gardner gets upended. A two-on-one break. 
And offside at the blue line. Oh, my. Halpern was offside, and it negates a dangerous-looking two-on-one. Boy, Halpern's been a disappointing player for the Phoenix Coyotes. They wanted a little more from him than what he's been able to give them, and he goes offside here. Just two goals for Halpern, six points throughout the season. Former Washington Capital. And the change of players. The Leafs will go to the power play here in Actually, right now, they're on the man advantage, and a minute four left to go in it. Hammered down into the Toronto zone. Phaneuf trying to get away from the four, checking. Vermet goes in there after it. Kessel has it behind the goal, and he'll leave it there for Phaneuf, who's trying to get some clearance here in order to work his way free. And finally, he does as the two Coyotes head to the bench. Here's Phaneuf coming through the neutral zone. Tried to flip it in on the wing. Was tripped up. He gets it into the corner. McCulloch plays it around on the boards. Franson is unable to trap it. And racing after it is David Moss. Moss with an angle. And a weak shot steered wide of the net by Bernier. Leafs scored with their first man advantage. Their second is an abbreviated one that has just a dozen seconds left in it. Now stolen and Moss with a shot that goes off a stick in, into the screen. And a frustrated Phil Kessel slams the puck into the end boards. We talked about Antoine Vernet and the amount of draws that he's taken and how this team relies on him heavily here, particularly killing penalties. And Dave Tippett. A very similar player to Antoine Vermette in many ways, although Tippett had a little more sandpaper to his game than Antoine does, but a defensive specialist nevertheless. He played with Matthew Lombardi for Drummondville in the Memorial Cup in 2003. And uh, here's the Leafs trying to break out the power play with just uh, the penalty now expires as Gleason gets it to the line. It bounces, but it is going to be offside, says the linesman. And they'll bring it back into the center ice area and face it off in front of the Toronto bench. This game is slowed down to a coyote pace. This is the way they like to play. But normally when they do, they're involved in one goal games, which they're 11-1 and 0 in the season when they get into those situations. And that's why the Leaf lead was so critical in period number one is that Dave Tippett's group can almost shut you down New Jersey-like sometimes when they get a lead. Fourth line out there for Toronto. It's an interesting year for Dave Tippett's group. At the start of the year, they were scoring at will, which was so uncharacteristic for this team. Then they've now they've stopped scoring and they're defending better again. It's been a sort of a complete reversal from what it was early in the season for the Phoenix Coyotes. Jay McClement back of the goal. Ashton unable to pull it out and take it out in front. Now gets grabbed onto, and there's going to be a penalty here to the Coyotes with a shot in front of the net. Score! Carl Gunnarsson, he usually isn't in front of the net, but knowing that it was a power play coming, he took the chance, and he scores his first goal of the season. It's 3-0 Toronto. And Gunnarsson, the left side of your screen, just come right down the middle now, and nobody's around. He's out. Oh, I might as well just stay there. And he does, and the puck arrives right on his stick, and he makes no mistake at all. Some real nice work down low by Carter Ashton to gain puck recovery. And then the fourth line, who has hardly scored all season long, gets a very important goal. And Gunnarsson jumps in, and a big-time goal for the Leafs. Well, I'm sure Carl Gunnarsson can tell you about every one of the 13 goals he scored in the National Hockey League. He's got a smile on his face about that one as he scores to make it 3-0 Toronto. Yeah, I think the first one was against Martin Brodeur in New Jersey. I think you're right, Paul. So with six attackers on the ice and a delayed penalty coming, Carl Gunnarsson creeps down and makes it a 3-0 Toronto lead. Now a pass into the slot for Ribeiro. He tries to return the favor, and the Leafs will break it out at center with Lupul. Lupul dumps it deep into the zone. Smith out of the goal, trying to play it up on the wing, and hit one of his players in the rump, and it is grabbed off by Shane Doan. Kept in by Kadri. Kadri down the boards, 
Mm -hmm. Little spinning move, couldn't elude Doan, and it is Ribeiro throwing it back into his own zone, and the defense starts out with it. Morris to the leaf line, Morris in with a shot over top the goal. Goes after it himself to play it high into the corner. Ribeiro too well covered, and Tim Gleason turns now for Toronto. Gleason pushes it to the blue line, and he'll get some assistance in Lupo getting it out. Brought on by Cody Franson. He'll send it wide of the goal into the far corner. Kadri was down there, but is heading to the bench now for a change. Out comes Ekman Larson to center. Weaving in on the right side, backhands it behind the Toronto net. Bernier thinks about playing it on and did, but then it was stolen into the corner for Chip Chura. Chip Chura back to the blue line. Ekman Larson in with a shot, deflection front wide of the goal. Raymond a glance over his shoulder, but can't free the puck up to get it up on the wing to Holland, who was available. Gardner ties up his man, the puck comes free. Now here's a chance at the sharp angle, going in front of the net, oh, and a save! Made by Bernier! He came across there! Holy mackinac, he got that blocking arm and stick out and makes the save of the game! Holland off the boards to center. McCulloch going back. Frustrated forward group from the Coyotes. Now here's a chance for Botker in front! And the shot and the pass! To the near side went wide of the goal. Korpakoski, who hit the crossbar in the first period, had a great chance there, but it was the save early on right here that was the save of the game for Bernier. And a lot of it has not been from straight rush chances in the defense coming late. A lot of it has been from defense joining the attack, coming in after the Toronto Maple Leafs have come up with a cycle. It happened on the first goal. And then again, a little cycle by the Maple Leafs in the second goal, and the same thing. Down into the zone, a centering pass in front, oh, and it's fired high on over top the lead goal. Down along the boards, Korpakoski. The Leafs have been rather nonchalant here after taking the 3-0 lead. On the wing it comes and played off the glass to center ice. Bozak with Kessel and Van Riemsdyk. Ekman Larson. Back in his own zone, stolen by Bozak. Now Kessel waits for a man in front. And a drive is hammered by Van Riemsdyk and stopped by Mike Smith. Korpakoski to center for the Coyotes. Played into the Toronto corner. Branson one-hands it behind for Gleason. Gleason looks up ice, played it to the line but not out. Shoveled back of the net. Branson with a lead pass. This time Kessel has it, but his feed for Kadri did not work. Tim Kennedy in over the line. Onto the right wing side for Bada and swallowed up by Bernier to bring a face off in the Toronto zone with 11.39 to go in the second period, and the Leafs have added to their lead. And again, a lot of these shots in this game from the Coyotes have been on the outside, other than the tremendous save Bernier made moments ago. He's had quite a few routine saves where he's not let rebounds out, but he's been able to see the puck all the way through as the leap defense and forwards have done a good job of pushing Phoenix to the outside. Last Gunnarsson goal was against the Islanders in January 24th of 2013. Enough and Ashton drawing the assists on the goal. It gives the Leafs a 3-0 lead. Here's Kuhleman coming to center. Onto the wing for Lupo. Kuhlman to the front of the net. The shot is stopped and a big rebound off Smith. Taken to safety there by Rob Klinkhammer. Morris to Yandel. A long lead pass. Got around Riley into the corner. Sharp bangle shot. Handled there by Bernier as he was hugging the post. Played back of the net for Kennedy. Tim Kennedy trying to get around from Morgan Riley. Back of the net for Klinkhammer. Again back of the net for Verbata. Verbata to the blue line. Yandel creeps in with a pass in front of the ball. Bernier came across there, made an excellent save. Klinkhammer may have gotten high sticked, and there's going to be a penalty here to Nazem Kadri, but another post to post excellent save made by Bernier, who was completely square when he got there to take that off the chest. And here's the high stick in front by Kadri right there. Oh boy. As he, I think, attempts to lift his stick and missed. So the second power play of the period for the Coyotes comes at 9.15. And they're going to give it to Morgan Riley. You can't believe it. 
<laughs> now you know how David Jansen felt many years ago, boys. Oh, now that was a television that show. Was. And the one-armed man got away with it. Not until the last. Not episode. till the end. Ekman Larson over on the far side. A pass into the slot intercepted by Franson and sent out and down the ice. Yandel carries the puck to center. He's going to drop it back. Hitting the Toronto blue line and brought in by Doan. Ringed around the boards to the near side. Bodker back to the blue line. Ekman Larson back to Bodker. Challenged there by Kuhleman. And it comes back along the boards. And Ekman Larson has it again to Yandel. A shot. That was tough. There's a rebound. And again, Bernier comes across and gets a blocking glove in front of that. Put up, upended. Kuhleman double team. Ekman Larson with the puck trying to get around the official. Now to Yandel on the far side. Yandel along the boards for Doan. Phaneuf plays it back from whence it came. Doan gets it back to the blue line to Yandel. Yandel to the near side to Ekman Larson. Back to Yandel. A shot. Trickle just past the post. Back of the net it goes. Vermette. Phaneuf tied up. Gunnarsson is in there banging and hacking. The puck comes free. It comes into the slot. Yandel with it again. Ekman Larson with his pass just kept in at the blue line. Centering pass too high. Yandel will recover it, steering it back to the net. Long change for the Leafs, and a tired group of penalty killers are out there now. Ekman Larson with a shot, and the Leafs catch a break there as it goes off a stick and into the screen. Out of play with 28 seconds to go. The second period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Glendale is brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL. By Just Energy, energy made easy. And think you know the Maple Leafs will prove it. Predict game day action for a chance to win season tickets for the Leafs. Visit MapleLeafs.com slash last fan standing to learn more. Change of players. And the final seconds ticking down in this power play as it comes back to the blue line. Schlemko with a shot. That was off the mark wide. Ribeiro to the blue line again for Stone. Back to Ribeiro. Ribeiro looks. Now lost stick in front of the net is Bozax. Far side. It comes bouncing back to the blue line. Here's Schlemko with it again. Far side. Bozak's going to be able to retrieve his stick. And now it's Schlemko with it as the penalty is over to Riley. Over on the far side, a pass to Flex. Schlemko with it once more. Schlemko centers. Riley there. Spinning shot blocked. And is corralled by Franson and played out at center ice. Here's Morgan Riley into the attack. Playing forward on this line. It comes back to Van Riemsdyk a shot. And that was stopped. Pretty good splits made there by Tim Gleason to make a save. Around back behind the goal. Gardner corrals it there. Steers it for Carl Gunnarsson. And it is Gardner with it again. Both Gardner and Gunnarsson have scored in this hockey game. Eight minutes to play, second period. Long shoot in off the blocking glove of Bernier. The Coyotes have picked up the pace here since the Leafs took that 3 0 lead and are out shooting Toronto 21 19 at this point. A couple of successful power plays, even though they didn't score, is changing momentum. McCulloch with a shot. Bernier down low to direct that into the corner. Ekman Larson along the wall and behind into the corner. Gardner. Trying to find an outlet, we'll just play it on the glass and elevate it down into the Phoenix zone. And often that happens. You may not score in a power play, but if you get good chances and have puck control for a minute or so during the power play, often they'll change the look of the hockey game. And at the moment, the Phoenix Coyotes have come on a little bit more in this second period. Gardner plays it in front of his own goal, and Holland was the most surprised guy in the rink. That doesn't help. No. Morris into the slot. Nice play made there by Lupul to extract it. And now Troy Bodie gets it to center and into the zone. Change is coming for Toronto. Smith plays on. Ahead for Tim Kennedy. Down into the Toronto zone. Bernier out of the goal. Plays it back on the glass. It comes to the line but not out. Derek Morris a shot. Bernier is over there again. And he has caught that on his pants and held for a faceoff. It is 3-0 Toronto. Uh, Gleason has played a very steady style of 
game for the Toronto Maple Leafs so far, and he's getting rewarded with his fine play. It's not fancy, but he's blocked some big shots the last couple of weeks. He's been strong defensively. Watch this split. And a little bit of the splits here off the big toe. And, oh, he was in a position where he thought, I better get out of this position. I'm going to get a full muscle here. Yeah, tough to do at age 30. 11 minutes and 13 seconds of ice thus far for Timmy Gleason, who I'm sure wishes that he had been traded for a couple of days earlier. The Michigan native, I believe, I'm talking to him, he would have loved to have played at Michigan Stadium in the Winter Classic. Of course, that trade consummated during the Winter Classic as John Michael Lyles headed to Carolina. Pass off a skate of Gleason almost gave Bernier a headache there. Here's Van Riemsdyk. Flipping it high into the center ice area. Ekman Larson shoots it back in again. Bernier trapping it there. Gleason in the corner for Bozak. And up ahead it goes to Van Riemsdyk and on to Kessel. Kessel will shoot it in around the boards. Knocked out of the air by Smith. Up on the wing it got past Bozak. And out come the Coyotes again with it. As Klinkhammer gets it in over the line. Down into the corner once more. Chipchura taken to the boards. Trying to make a play as Tim Kennedy behind the net. It's centered, and it went right through the blue paint. Gardner with a chance to skate it out, and he's going to get the center and poke it along. Van Riemsdyk gets it in over the line. Ekman Larson, and it's brought in offside by the Maple Leafs. Kessel, and a change of players will come here with 5.47 to go in the second period. Titan Equity Group Limited is a proud partner of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Dream big. Invest in your future securely. Faceoff is outside the blue line. 5.47 to go in the period. Mike Ribeiro is there, and Yandel gets the faceoff win from him. And it is steered down into the Toronto zone, but that's going to be an icing call. So they'll face it off in the circle to the left of Mike Smith. The Leafs on a four-game win streak. Only a few people had Randy Carlisle fired a week or two ago, and all of a sudden now this team is back on track, and they've got a very important road trip coming up starting tonight. If they could grab an early two points on this trip now to get the momentum started, it would keep the coach pretty happy. He's been smiling a little bit more. Yeah, lately. I think so. A lot. A little bit. The fun meter's up off zero, and it was down around zero for a while, let me tell you. It was pinned there. And trying to pin his man is Carl Gunnarsson. Puck in his skates, and Doan loses it. And it is played by Lupul down into the Phoenix zone. Yandel carries out from his side of center. That should have been an icing, and it is, in fact, being called by the linesman. This is an interesting streak for the Maple Leafs because they're playing seven straight games, potentially against Olympic goaltending. They played Rask already and beat him in Boston. They had Ryan Miller of Buffalo, Carey Price, Montreal, Smith here. Then it's on to Varlamov in Denver, on to Lettinen in Dallas, and they'll finish with Pavlik Pretty good in one, Winnipeg. Joe. Hey, could have had Lundqvist versus the Rangers a few weeks back. That would have been eight. Well, so far, so good. Now here's... Raymond trying to slip it in front of the net and unable to get his stick on it was Peter Holland. Doan banks it off the boards and it is Franson with it, but his pass was partially blocked and now is sent deeper by Mike Ribeiro. It comes to the side of the goal and Bernier unable to play it, decides I'd better put the stop to this. Face off in the Toronto zone when we return. 3 0 Leafs. For hockey is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Well, Jonathan Bernier stopped all 23 shots that he's seen so far in this game. He's had a couple of breaks, a few posts, but still his rebound control has been terrific. And in this second period, that's his best save of the game as he came across on a two-on-one break. A draw to his right with 4.46 to go in the second period. Draw one, and it's back to Ekman Larson. Left wing side, Botker a shot off the blocking glove of Bernier once more. Off the glass, it comes to the near side, chipped by Kessel, but not out. And now it is Branson putting a reverse to his attempt to get it up on the wing. Kessel 
Unable to make a move. It comes back to the blue line. Ekman Larson playing it against the boards. Kessel unable to get it away from him. And it's around to the far side for Gleason. Gleason knocked down on the play. Ozak was there as well, but then it's pushed out at center ice by Van Riemsdyk, and here's Kessel waiting for Bozak to go to the front of the net. Now to France, and a shot! Off the goal post and into the screen. Third post of the night, the first for the Maple Leafs. Well, ding-a-ding-ding, ding, ding, that didn't go in. Now it's 2-1 in terms of the post game. And France in with that tremendous release, and this time the Leafs join the attack, the defense off a rush chance. A little turn back, here's France in cruising in. And a horrible change by the Phoenix Coyotes. And Kessel, he does that so well. Stops, turns back. What a shot. Clearly had Smith beat. And the only thing that beat Franson on that was the goalpost. Face off here to the left of uh, Smith. Not a sellout by any stretch of the imagination here in Phoenix. A lot of the private boxes on the far side remain empty. And the upper bowl seats are empty as well. Well, a Monday night at 6 o'clock, even though it is Martin Luther King Day on a... Yeah, pretty good. It's a it's a tough night to sell, and it's not obviously like the Toronto market where it doesn't matter what night you play on. There's Kess or Kadri trying to play it in over the line. And that would be the same in a lot of U.S. markets, to be quite honest with you. Ed, Anthony LeBlanc, the new president here, is doing a tremendous job trying to rebuild this franchise, and it's going to take some time, but they really believe that they are certainly making progress here in terms of their attendance and their interest in the hockey club. Kuhlman slips it down into the Phoenix zone, goes in there against Derek Morris. Behind the net, loophole, unable to get it out in front. Here's McClement off the bench, plays it back of the net, but Yandel cut it off, it comes to the line. Gardner is able to keep it in momentarily. Still free for McClement, and his weak wrist shot was blocked. And now a lead pass for Dome doesn't work. Gardner behind for Riley. Tied to the boards there as Halpern tries to dig it free. Now it comes into the corner. Bodie thinks better of it, comes back to the blue line, and it's going to be pushed to the line and not out. Out played up on the wing and out at center ice, and Bodie launches it down into Phoenix territory. Smith trying to play it. That was blocked by Bodie, but almost had a chance to wrap that to the net. 2.27 to go, second period. 3-0 Toronto. Chip Chura to the line and in. And it is controlled now by Gardner. His pass was blocked. Here's Chip Chura in the corner. Chip Chura with a backhand pass in front of the goal. And Bernier coming across on his knees is able to cover that up as Gardner had a chance to move it up ice. Shop.ca, where fans shop. Sign up and get $15 in free rewards today. Leafs are in trouble this period because they've been giving the puck away far too often and they've stopped moving their feet. And it's center ice before that, before this last giveaway. Shane Doan snuck in right behind Morgan Ryland. He was gone. And that just failed to click. And then moments ago, a giveaway by Gardner standing still. He's trying to play a two minute and seven second stretch of tidy hockey. To carry it out, three nothing lead to the period. The linesman gets pulled over by Jay McClement. Franson up ahead for Kessel, off the boards. McClement knocking it to the blue line. McCulloch across the line. Franson's going to play it out again. Leafs come up with it. Ahead for Bozak. Bozak with a shot steered wide of the net by Smith. Then he has to use his tennis racket to knock it over the goal, and it ends up being a high stick making contact with the puck. Well, you would think going into the Olympics that Smith will be designated the third goalie to start with Luongo and Carey Price battling it out for number one. And then, but you never know with Smith. I mean, earlier in the season, the management group for Team Canada had him as number one for a while, other than Carey Price, who has been just tremendous all season long. But they thought that Smith might battle it out for Price, but. He has fallen off a little bit in his game. And I would suggest at the moment he'd be number three going into the Olympics. I think you have to look at that. Luongo's got the experience. Oh, my goodness, look who's in the house. There's Alice, Alice Cooper, Cooper, a big hockey fan. Face off, one by Phoenix. 
Played around behind the net. Minute and a half to go in the period. Vermette up on the right wing. Bodker back for Vermette. Vermette curls to the blue line. Still with it to the point. McCulloch a shot. And again, steered off that blocking glove by Bernier and into the screen. He is a very adroit at redirecting pucks with that blocking glove. I've watched this all season long and I've been amazed by it. He always is able not only to make the save, but put it over the glass, which enables his team to get a break, regroup, get a face off. And as long as you got Jay McClemon out there winning face offs like you have tonight so far against a very good Antoine Vermette, you're okay. Let's see how this one goes. Little turn to the wrist. He loses this one. Though. Played into the corner behind the goal, far side. Vermette there as he centers in front of the net and the shot off the blocking glove again. Near side, Gandalf centers in front of the goal. That went just wide. Trying to come out in front of the net was Vermette and he was too well covered. Played back to the blue line for Morris. Slipped around to the near side. Carl Gunnarsson trying to get there ahead of his man and he plays it to the line and out into the center ice area. Uh, the Leafs just need to get through the next 55 seconds here and regroup. They have not had a good period and they look like they've just, the wheels have fallen off. Here's Lupo coming off the goal line. Couldn't get a shot away. Yandel pushes it ahead at center. Doan across the line. Doan to the right wing side and a shot is deflected off the stick of Verbata wide of the net. Verbata gets it again and a shot. Toe save made by Bernier. Another pass in front. That went just wide. Down into the corner it goes. Back to the blue line. It's going to come out over the line. They just have nothing in the tank right now. The Toronto Maple Leafs. It just looks like their legs have just stopped going for them. And mm. if it wasn't for Bernier this game might be even close to being tied. There. Coyotes have had several quality chances in period two. 27-20, they've outshot the Maple Leafs at this particular point. And it appears the Leafs are going to score the only goal of the period and take a 3-0 lead into the dressing room after 40 minutes of play. Carl Gunnarsson from Dion Phaneuf and Carter Ashton with the Leafs with six attackers on the ice as a delayed penalty call was coming up. And if it wasn't for Jonathan Bernier, it was all him in that period after the Leafs got an early lead. Then they just sat back. Phoenix with a couple of power plays seemed to gain a little momentum. And the Leafs never were able to get it back in that second period. 15 to 6 they are out shot. Let's go downstairs to Paul. Thanks very much, Joe. The Leafs getting the lone goal of that middle frame. Carl Gunnarsson going hard to the net and getting a nice bounce in front of the net to put it in the far corner. And Toronto was a result after two periods of play uh, leading this game by a score of 3 0. Peter Holland joins us. Uh, time to regroup. You still got the lead, but what has to be done to get back to where you want to be heading to the third period and given what they threw at you in that second? Well, I think we need to do uh, some of the simple things in the game a little bit better. Uh, being on the right side of pucks and uh, getting the puck deep, especially the two things that we need to focus on for the third and uh, protect the sleep. A week ago, less than that, you were with the Marlies. They win again today in Rockford. What does it say about you and the rest of the guys who've been up and back down and how competitive you've been when being sent back down there without hanging the lower lip and being very competitive? Well, I think it's just a testament to, to the group of guys that have in this organization. I think everyone's a, a great person on and off the ice. and um, you know They welcomed me when I went down there, so it made it a lot easier. And um, you know there's a, there's a lot of good hockey players that uh, Leaf fans can, can look forward to. Peter, thank you. Thanks. The Leafs' next three games brought to you by ProLine. Get way into the game. Here is the television schedule. Right back at it tomorrow night in Denver as they take on the Avalanche on Sportsnet Thursday on TSN. Leafs in Dallas and Saturday on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada when they take on the Winnipeg Jets. The radio schedule in Denver tomorrow night. TSN Radio 1050 Toronto Thursday. Sportsnet 590 The Fan. And on Saturday, TSN 1050 Toronto as well. Gardner. And the rest of the defense, like Carl Gunnarsson, score 3-0 Toronto after 40 in Phoenix. Back here at the Jobbing.com Arena in Glendale, Arizona. Joe Bowen along with Greg Millen and Paul Hendrick. As the Leafs will carry a 3-0 lead into the third period. Randy Carlisle couldn't have been too happy the way his team responded after they went up 3-love. No, and I think the first few shifts here are very important for... The Toronto Maple Leafs to get their jump back here and get back playing in Phoenix's zone. As the Coyotes certainly gained some confidence in the second, but the difference Bernier in this game again. Van Riemsdyk tips it into the zone, stolen here, and a centering pass by Bozak is going to come all the way back into the Toronto end. What? 
<laughs> this will end up at center ice. Officials are, the officials already skated to center ice. And that's where it's going to go. Yeah, there was a there was a perfect icing uh, if it had gone the opposite direction. Quickly corrected. There's Carl Gunnarsson off the boards. Van Riemsdyk tipping it into the zone. Smith out of the cage. Play it back of the net. McCulloch got it up on the wing. Blocking that was Carl Gunnarsson as it rolls into the goal piece and thrown aside by Smith. Doan. A lead pass for Verbata. Verbata in and ramping off the stick of Carl Gunnarsson. It makes the screen out of play. Well, Dave Tippett, a frustrated coach at the moment because he's seeing some inconsistency similar to the way the Leafs were, where they put some games together, and then in December, they have just suffered badly since then. And five victories in their last 17 games. And there's the Hartford Whaler jerseys. You don't see a lot of those. I wonder if it says Millen on the back. I doubt it. I got a couple in my basement. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Ah. There's Franson behind the goal. Are there moth holes in them, or are they all right? Actually, they're not there. Are they, are they pristine? They're not, there. they're not there anymore. Oh, no? They're put away. Right, right oh. beside his free willy collection. <laughs> <laughs> couple of good movies. Yes, there is. <laughs> Quite a collection. Here's Bodka in over the line. It's a two-on-one with a pass. And unable to handle the bouncing puck was Korpikoski. He's had a tough time. He hit the goal post in the crossfire in the first period and now denied on a two-on-one. Lupo in over the line. A rink wide pass is intercepted by Bodka, and he'll start out. Change is coming for both teams. Yandel will press the attack. Carries in, Yandel to the dot with a pass in front of the goal and an off a skate, it comes wide of the Toronto net. Yandel pumping it around behind the goal for David Moss. Moss being chased there by Morgan Riley, got it back to the blue line. Riley intercepts and played it off the glass into neutral ice. Holland trying to stay on the defensive side of that scrum. Played back to the blue line and up on the right wing side now for Mike Ribeiro who shoots it in. Out of the goal, Bernier, he fanned on his pass and then inadvertently gives it away. But then so does Morris, or excuse me, Ribeiro, as he tried to get it back to the blue line. Now we got Smith stick handling with it out in the corner. Off the glass and down into the Toronto zone. Pretty good head faking there by Mike Smith. Free it up. And against the boards, Gunnarsson kicks it up on the wing. Holland is in there now, and now Gunnarsson has to go back. He's taken out of the play. It's again into the corner with Fanuf adding support, and as it pokes itself free, out comes Mason Raymond. Raymond across the line, just slipping it into the corner for Troy Bodie. Back of the net, far side, Holland. Peter Holland curling out with it, wants to keep it down low, and he does. Bodie now on the end boards trying to cycle the puck against Morris, and it comes free, and now here the Coyotes bringing it out at center. Stripped away there with the back checking of Holland. Gleason plays it in over the line, and they're going to whistle this down offside, and a faceoff will come back into the center ice area. The third period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Glendale, Arizona is brought to you by Tim Horton's official coffee of the NHL. Uh, moments ago, the Leafs look like they're in a bit of trouble in a two-on-one break. Kadri at the middle of your screen puts his head down with his great speed, and he may not have got there right at the same time, but he rushed Chipchera enough that it caused him to bobble the puck and consequently no chance at all on the play for the Phoenix Coyotes. A lead pass for Kessel off the far board. That bounded away from him, though. And his weak backhand is into Smith. Behind the net for McCulloch. Up on the right wing side. Tipped by Verbata into the Toronto zone. Fanuf is going to get to the dot ahead of the Phoenix player to produce an icing. And this is more, I think, what Randy Carlisle had in mind. Keep things to the outside. See if they can't get a little more cycling done in the offensive end, but 
keep the chances to a minimum. Yeah, keep pucks on the boards and don't go through the middle of the ice as much as possible and keep this game simple. Keep chipping pucks behind the defense and defend this lead and eat the clock. Draw to the left of Smith. Kadri wins it, Lupel to the blue line, gets it returned from Franson, and a shot is in on goal. There's a big rebound, another shot stopped by Smith, and taken back to the net by Tim Kennedy. Kennedy starts out, got it ahead at center and across the line. Far side for Doan, backhanded in front. That way at the side of the goal, and it's cleared into the corner. Bravada hits the side of the net with a centering pass. Side of the goal for Doan, out over the line, offside. Trying to get to the puck as quickly as he could was Vermette, but he didn't reach the blue line in time. So they'll face it off outside the Toronto zone. Oh, one of the men behind the scenes is there's Anthony LeBlanc. He's a Canadian from Thunder Bay who took a stab at this team. I think he's got the world record for being in and out of deals. It had to be at least four times. But his persistence to stay with it is why the Phoenix Coyotes is here at the moment. He got another investment group when everything looked dead, and he deserves a ton of credit. And uh, a former Blackberry executive got out at the right time. And a real Canadian hockey fan who now is the president of this hockey team. What a remarkable story, and he's going to do a great job here, I guarantee you. Play was whistled down offside, but Fanuf is going to get a penalty for tripping up the player after the play. And to the right of your screen, here comes Fanuf. He stands up, and it was an offside play. Fanuf saying, wait a minute, why am I in the box there? So the third power play of the game coming for Phoenix as a result. And Carlisle questioning that with the official now. The play was offside. Why is there a penalty after the fact? And Eric Ferlat is explaining it to the Leafs bench. A bit of a disbelieving Sudbarian behind the bench. I think, he, I think he kind of agreed with the argument once it was explained to him in the end. Around back of the goal, played up on the board, slashed out, it goes high in the air. Kuhlman trying to get it freed up. Now it is Gleason. He's unable to clear, and it's around behind the goal. And now Carl Gunnarsson with a little bit of time, but can't get it freed up to get the shot to get it down the ice. Here's Ekman Larson, near side for Ribeiro. Ribeiro looking in front. He had Yandel creeping in. Ekman Larson keeps it in at the blue line. Verbata. Ekman Larson over to Yandel. Yandel with a shot. That's off the mark wide of the net. That was deflected right out of the glove of Bernier. Kept alive at the blue line. Ekman Larson. Keith Yandel with a shot. That went off the shin pad of Gleason in front of the net. Ekman Larson with it again. Verbata back to the blue line. Into the slot for Yandel, a shot, and that deflects off Gleason and goes wide to the goal. Verbata behind the goal, long siege here. Back to the point to Keith Yandel. Over on the far side as Verbata goes to the front of the net, but the pass for Ekman Larson was out of his reach. Ekman Larson back to Yandel. Yandel unable to make the play there as Clement was in the way. Verbata back to the blue line. A shot right on. Backhand shot. Another shot stopped by Bernier. Comes back into the slot. Handle a pass in front. They score. Mike Ribeiro off to the side of the net. And the power play gets Phoenix on the board. This was a fabulous play by Yandel. As the Leafs now are dead tired. And Bernier can't find the handle on the rebound. The loose puck comes out again. And two defensemen go for the block. Gleason gets caught on the wrong side. And everybody's running around by the end of this fatigue. And what a beautiful play by Yandel, who deserves a ton of credit to fake the shot and then throw it across. And Ribeiro, who's been in and out a little bit of late, needed that goal also as he personally has been struggling a bit. So it is a 3-1 hockey game as the power play clicks for the Phoenix Coyotes. 
Halpern across the line with a long rolling shot that is smothered by Bernier. And it'll be faced off in the circle to his right. Tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Glendale, Arizona is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. So the coyote howl is heard here in the Jobing.com arena. Back to the blue line to Yandel a shot and down in the slot area is Mason Raymond and a high stick catching him under the shield. And uh, is he cut as he heads to the bench? And right off the draw, there's the collision right there, and the stick is up. And it's going to be Halpern in the penalty box, high sticking. So the Leafs power play gets an opportunity to restore a three-goal lead. Well, this is a huge break for the Maple Leafs, who have been back on their heels now for the entire second period and early here in the third and now they can at least hope to get the momentum back here with a power play that has some good puck movement and chances and a goal obviously a bonus the leafs are first in the power play at home but 18th on the road as it is cleared out into the center ice area in a race for it france are trying to get back and he's able to restore it but his play up the slot doesn't work here's a chance and a goal stop by bernier and he's going to hold on. And you wonder if this Leaf team is a little bit out of gas here. Is the mental errors they've made throughout the last part of this game have been monumental. And the way I, the reason I say that, you're coming off an extremely difficult emotional game win against the Montreal Canadiens Saturday night. And then you got to travel out to the West Coast, which is a difficult trip, particularly when you don't do it often. Branson was complaining that he was held while the puck was being restored by the Phoenix player to no avail. Leafs have only had a five on three on two occasions this year. They've been shorthanded two men on nine occasions. Enough behind the net. Kessel thought about moving now enough looks up ice and finds Kessel rink wide feed Bozak in on the wing France and thinks better of chasing after it Bozak wondering why that is an interference and Kessel is able to knock down a clearing pass McCulloch in against the boards Kessel gets to it France is going to be able to keep it in at the blue line with a long shot that was high and wide Phaneuf into the slot it comes off the stick Kessel and Phaneuf trying to keep it in and it's on to the stick now with David Moss who plays into the Toronto zone Kessel a goal and an assist as his point streak continues but a pass for Riley doesn't work Lupel has to wait for teammates to get on side Gardner's in across the line into the corner for Lupel Lupel at the half boards now back to Jake Gardner Gardner works to the middle of the ice with a wrist shot that doesn't make it through and it's shot out and down the ice by Phoenix 29 seconds left in the power play. Gardner coming out with it slowly to his own line with the pass off a stick. Morgan Riley has darted in there. He plays back of the goal and onto the near boards. Unable to get it back for Kadri. Kadri's able to block the first attempt at clear. Now comes out with it back to the blue line. Gardner saucers it off on the wing for Mason Raymond. Raymond back to Gardner. Riley available but goes into the slot. Now over on the far side for Morgan Riley. Back to Gardner, wrist shot coming, it's off the mark wide. Penalty is over, Halpern's back on, and it's out into the center ice area. Gardner will shoot it back in, the Leafs will get a change going. McCulloch with a long up now, and Bodker's across the line. Backhanded in for him, too well covered, but onto it quickly. The Coyotes look for an opening. Here's Doan bringing it back to the blue line. Morris has played it in, it's a delayed offside. And Carl Gunnarsson turns with it, playing it back into his own zone. Gunnarsson with it again. Up on the left wing side for Kuhleman and tipped into the Phoenix end of the rink. Coyotes with an errant pass. And this will be an icing charge with 11 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the third period. 
Leafs fans, Rogers and Fido Wireless customers now have more chances to win with the Leafs. Every game day, you can text Leafs to 555 for a chance to win monthly prizes, which include Toronto Maple Leafs tickets and autographed team jerseys. Well, the face I'm in the circle to the left of Mike Smith. And everybody moving early and thrown out of the face-off circle is Mike Ribeiro. So Bozak will take the draw for Toronto against Verbata, and he wins it cleanly to Phaneuf. Phaneuf pumping it around to the side of the net, but cut off by Derek Morris and played out into the center ice area. Here are the Coyotes bringing it back in over the line. Stepping around his man, Ribeiro going to the front of the net, and it's cleared by the Maple Leafs. And out into the bench it goes. And we'll sort things out when we come back. It is a 3-1 Toronto lead here in Phoenix. Brought to you by Sokoloff Lawyers. Seriously injured? Don't put it off. Call Sokoloff, the personal injury experts. Visit areyouhurt.ca. You know, everybody thinks that Bolin is going to maybe get back this year, and he might. But the injury that he has, it's going to be very, very difficult to get back this year, be even close to 100%. And how about Gunnarsson here with the stick? He loses a stick, and the stick has a mind of its own. It makes a great play <laughs> on Ribeiro. And I'll get back to that bowling point in a minute. Played into the corner. Now into the near side. It comes back to the point. McCulloch's shot is deflected wide of the net by Bernier. 33 shots for the Coyotes. Sent into the side of the net. Phaneuf unable to get it. A penalty is coming here against Phoenix, I believe. It's Vermet who may be getting the penalty, and it is. Did he run into Bernier? And Tippis is thinking just as the team is getting coming back a bit. And Vermette gets tripped up a little bit by Phaneuf here right in the slot. No penalty there. So the Leafs may have got away with that. And then Phaneuf runs a little bit of a pick to Vermette. And then Vermette couldn't get out of the way of Bernier. And that's when he got the penalty. Ooh. Fourth power a break there the for the Maple for Toronto, Leafs. Yep. Draw one by the Leafs. Bozak, Phaneuf, far side, Franson. Into the slot off. Bozak chipped back to the near corner. Kessel at the near half boards now. Tried to send it in and went right back to uh, Franson. His shot was blocked. Trying to chop it in. He can't. And now it is cleared ahead and brought out by Ekman Larson to center. He tries to work in over the line with a long shot that went off a body and just wide of that near post. And I mean just wide. Kessel. On to the wing for Van Riemsdyk, but his pass comes out into the center ice area. That shot hit Dion Phaneuf's shin pad and went with just wide. Now Franson gives the puck away. Here's a chance for Vermette. Holy Mackinac, what a big save that is right there. From goaltender Jonathan Bernier. Bozak in across the line. Into the corner, Kessel coming around, gets it back to the blue line. Penalty coming in front of the net for interference. And I think it's James Van Riemsdyk. These officials have been busy, haven't they, in this third period? And the players are becoming pretty frustrated on both sides. And Van Riemsdyk in front of the net, but caught for interference. 10-13, the time of the penalty. And, uh, and, uh, and right behind the net with Schlenko, he gets tied up, taking to him. And here's the play that went off, went up right off his leg. Lou almost fooled Bernier, and then after that, Bernier made a terrific shorthanded save. So they'll play four on four for 59 seconds, and then the Coyote power play will be a minute one in duration. As it is broken up and brought to center ice by Gardner. Gardner flipping it in deep. Smith out of the cage. Just playing that before it got into the non-trapezoidal area. A pass up the middle for Doan. Shane Doan coming across the neutral zone. Drops it off. Bodker with a spinning move. Now to Morris. Morris on the far side to Yandel. His pass for Doan was too hard for him to handle cleanly. Now Bodker in the corner. Bodker working back towards the blue line. Mikhail Bodker to the far side to Yandel in a shot. Steered wide easily by Bernier. Into the corner now for Gardner tying it up. 
Kadri can't get to it. Yandel does. Back into the slot. Now down the slot came the Phoenix player, but Schwartz was cut off, and now the Leafs have a two-on-one. A pass in for Kadri. Oh, and an excellent poke, say, poke check made by Mike Smith. Back the other way comes Phoenix. Into the slot now in a pass. No, it goes into the slot. Off a skate. Ekman Larson with it back to the blue line and now on the power play for Phoenix. To the near side for Yandel. He couldn't handle it. Gleason plays it along the boards. It comes back into the slot again. Ekman Larson to the far side of shot right. Rebound is chipped wide of the goal by Ribeiro. Broken stick out there belonging to Jay McClement. He gets one off the bench, but a shot stopped by Bernier. Oh, a quick glance behind him. But when he didn't see anything there, he knew where it was. But he got there. And before this chance, the Leafs at the other end, Lupo on a two-on-one break with Kadri. Throws it across. What a great stick by Smith on Kadri there to rob him. And then at the other end, Ribeiro almost tucked it in the short side. A good play by Gleason there to help out the cause. 34 seconds left in the... Penalty to Van Riemsdyk. A Clement won the draw, but it comes free to Ribeiro. Ribeiro to the side of the net, poked off his stick, and Jay McClement fights his way to get it out on the backhand down the ice. Smith leaving it there for Keith Yandel. Yandel up ahead for Adam Verbata. Verbata poked off his stick, it comes into the slot. McClement took his man down as Korpakoski couldn't get the shot away. Now Korpakoski to the point. Yandel with a shot. Bernier juggled it a little bit as he slid across to take it on the chest. But again, no rebound and another faceoff. Yeah, just get back, getting back to that bowl and talk. Eric Carlson did get back for the playoffs, which was remarkable. Like, nobody could actually believe he did it. He wasn't even close to 100%. He did play. He's an incredible talent. Even this year. Even after a summer of training, he really said it didn't feel right until the last couple of weeks. So it's going to be a long recovery for David Bolin, and it'll be interesting to see if he gets back at all this season. Of course, the Leafs are hoping he does, and so is he. But here is Yandel with a shot. That goes wide. Now stuffing it from the short, short side, but blocked by Bernier. And now Franson trying to play it ahead, doesn't get it out. It's cleared back of the net again. Doan forced off the disc and cleared to the line and out by Cody Franson. No one will work harder at it, though, Milsey, than David Bowen. Oh, absolutely, and Carlson was the same way. And he will give every effort to try to get back, and he may, but it's going to be a long time before he's close to 100%. No doubt about that. That is a difficult, difficult injury. And Wienstein getting it down into the zone. Carl Gunnarsson off the bench, plays it on the backhand behind the net, and Ekman Larson loses it there to Kessel, who swept it in front, and Van Riemsdyk was heading to the net, but the puck was intercepted. Brought back the other way now by Ekman Larson, stolen by the Leafs, and back the other way comes Bozak. Bozak thinking about driving the net, and fall down! A holding call here as Bozak is yanked to the ice by McCulloch. Leaps back to the power play. Well, it is time for the delivery of the game presented by Purolator. Excitement delivered. And Bernier, we're going to take some more look at his work because, frankly, he has been the major story in this game as the Phoenix Coyotes have been all over the Maple Leafs from about the five-minute mark of the second period on. And Bernier, the difference now. 38 shots against them. Just one allowed. Kadri will take the draw. And it is won by the Coyotes, but Lupo got there to disrupt things, and it's bounced out into the center ice area. Chopped back by Gardner. Kadri works to the line. Nifty move to get in over the line. Drop pass for Raymond. Mason Raymond. Trying to play it back to the blue line, has to Gardner. Gardner doesn't shoot it. Raymond gets his pass, and his shot went off a leg. Morgan Riley with it now at the half boards. Riley to the blue line to Raymond, filling in. Near side for Gardner. Gardner's wrist shot is deflected high and into the screen off the blocking glove of Mike Smith. Uh, so they'll face it off in the circle to his right. And uh, 
minute 27 to go in the power play and 615 to go in the third period. And the Kessel line in Bozak still not out on this power play yet. And Smith going to the bench to get a stick. So he'll get a new cue and go back into the goal crease. And here's the shot by Gardner that hit the shaft of his stick and shattered it. Face off to his right. Kadri wins the draw cleanly to Morgan Riley. Off the boards for Raymond. To the blue line to Gardner. Stepping in the middle, sends it back to Riley. Back to Gardner, off his skate. And they'll have to hustle back after it. And Gardner has it now, and he brings it back the other way. Drop pass for Kadri. Kadri to the half boards and stops. Back to the blue line to Riley. Riley to Gardner. Gardner, cross ice. Kadri shooting, scores! Nazeb Kadri with the shot. It may have hit something in front to catch that near corner. But the Leafs have put an exclamation mark on this one to restore their three-goal lead. It goes off Schlenko in a terrific play on the pass to find Kadri on the half wall. And Gardner in the neutral zone makes a fine defensive play, uses his speed to gain the blue line. Kadri with a good play to protect the puck to keep the play alive. And then Kadri finds the seam. Guess who? Gardner finds him back. A little give and go. That great release of Gardner. And it hits Schlenko on the way in. And a very important insurance goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs here with 5.49 to go. Two for five on the power play. Kadri with his 12th of the season and his fourth with the man advantage. And the Leafs have restored a three goal lead and another penalty is coming here to Phoenix. The Leafs are going back to power play. Hockey when we return. Blue everywhere, even here in Phoenix and Ekman Larson is in the penalty box for holding. As he trips up Cody Franson on the half wall. Tries to squeak by him and then pulls his arm out, just hauls him down. It's been a big night for the Leaf Defense Corps. Gunnarsson and Gardner have scored. Gardner and uh, Riley assist on the Cadbury goal. And now the sixth power play opportunity of the game for the Maple Leafs. And a tidy little two minutes will put this one to bed almost. Now here is Riley to the near side, works into the half boards, plays it around to the far corner for Kadri, on to Raymond. Raymond saucers it back to Kadri. He thought about going to the half boards himself, but it is stolen, then intercepted and passed by Lupel. Kadri couldn't come up with it. Gardner at the blue line to Nassim Kadri and trying to go through the box doesn't work, and now it's a two on one. Riley trying to get back. Here's a pass in front of net, they score! How big is that fourth goal by Kadri now? The Leafs get a little bit too cute. And a giveaway there. And a pass across. And it's Kadri who gives the puck away initially. The little give and go drag here. Kadri tries to get a little bit too cute going through the seam. And Kadri gets a big goal. And then he's responsible for giving up a shorthanded goal. And Vermette here gets the Coyotes back in this game a little bit. They're running out of time. That is their first shorthanded goal of the season. It's the fifth surrendered by the Maple Leafs on their power play this year. And it's a big one here as it gets the lead down to two goals. Round on the boards now for Bozak. He loses it. Three on two rush going the other way now for Phoenix. Here's Bodker with a shot, and Bernier will not give up a rebound here. And that's the fountain of youth for Kadri. You love what he does offensively. He has great games like he did in Montreal. Has a big goal here tonight, and then makes a defensive error that ends up in the back of your net. 
Sun Life Financial is proud to be helping Buds this season. Tweet hashtag Helping Buds and Sun Life Financial will donate two dollars to Diabetes Prevention Program in Toronto on your behalf. But I in think saying Randy that, Carlisle has called time out here to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, in saying that, it's not just Nazim Kadri; it's all young players, particularly skilled ones. They all go through those growing pains. You remember Jason Spezza? How he still has that surface at time, but in it, as a young player, it drove Ottawa crazy. And here's this play. Kadri just trying to do a little bit too much, and then gets caught. But he got a big goal to give the Leafs a, a pretty good insurance lead here with 4.29 to go. And I'm not giving it to the kid. I really like his game, but it's just that He's still a young player, and you have to remember that. It takes time. Play the score. No need to go through the box. Keep it to the outside. Eat the two minutes. Don't have to make it 5-2 or 5-1. 4-1 uh, will do, and the time being eaten off the clock is important. Here's Kessel across the line. Kessel into the slot, back to the blue line to Dion Phaneuf. Phaneuf works away to get away from a Vermont centering pass, and it's knocked out and down the ice by Phoenix. 30 seconds left in this power play, and Carl Gunnarsson is behind the goal. Gunnarsson onto the wing for Kessel. Across the line, Van Riemsdyk back to Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson down into the corner, centered in front. Oh, and big save by Smith there off JVR in front of the goal. Kessel working it back along the wall, has it stolen, and it is shot into the ow, and hit about four noggins on the way down the third line. Is there a penalty here for that? Apparently not. And all Leaf fans too, Joe. Yes, it was. They've all taken a couple of whacks on the way. Here's another look at it. Off, Off the, the glass. glass first. Yep. Off the glass first and then down the ice. One second left in the Ekman Larson penalty. Not a lot of grass growing on those streets, too, the two guys that got hit. <laughs> <laughs> it just got busier on those roads tonight. They're okay, though. Oh, they're okay. All yeah. right. <laughs> uh, bear to center, Bear, you say, Paul? Oh, pretty bear. <laughs> Draw one by Toronto. Gleason playing it in over the line, and the penalty is over. By the way, that was the first goal for Kadri since, what, December the 23rd, I believe. So you could see the relief on the youngster's face when it went in. Now Toronto at center, and Kadri back out there with Lupul, who takes the drop pass. Lupul with a backhand in front, scooped up by Smith. He wanted to play on, but couldn't get away from too many of the checkers, and so it'll be brought back. It'll be in the circle to his right. Yep, December the 23rd against the Rangers 11 games ago. That was the last time Nazem Kadri scored until tonight. His 12th of the season from Gardner and Riley on the power play. As you look at the standings and how important two points would be here this evening. Shot in wide of the goal by Phaneuf and into the corner. Out is Mason Raymond along with Troy Bodie trying to free the puck up as it's played to the side of the net. And here is Morris starting out with it with a long pass broken up by Carl Gunnarsson anticipating that. Well, he sends it to the net and it's going to be deflected by Smith up into the screen with under three minutes to play here in the third period. Follow at Maple Leafs on Twitter for a chance to win great prizes. Recite, receive insider information and get behind the scenes action. Use the TML Talk hashtag to join in on the conversation now. Korpakoski, who's had a tough night around the net, gets the assist on the Vermette goal. Now the shorthanded goal that made it 4-2, and that's where we stand now. Gunnarsson playing it behind the net. Centering effort there by Van Riemsdyk to the side of the goal. Bozak spins. It's in the slot area and finally dug out by the Coyotes and played down into the Toronto zone. And now what? A whistle here. And uh, the referee, Eric Verlott, looking at the bench. 
I'm not sure why that was stopped. Did I miss something? It's in the circle to the right. And uh, it's, there's Henny's bear to center bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's not as Zelda to Sudbury on a winter night. No, sir. Face off with Ribeiro. He wins it. Smith still in the net as it's pushed out into the center ice area with two and a half minutes to play. Ekman Larson got it ahead at center. Broken up there by Toronto. Kadri gets to the red line and down deep into Phoenix territory it goes. Kadri steals the puck. Plays it back towards the blue line. Kept alive there by Kuhleman. He sends it behind the net. Hustling after it is Lupo. Kuhleman traps at the blue line. Wants to get it in deep and does. Long shot taken by Lupo was well wide. And Doan has it at the far boards. Doan coming to center. He sends a shot in wide of the goal. And Fanuk will tip it to the line, but it won't clear. Kept alive there by Keith Yandel to the side of the net. Ribeiro with it again. Back to the blue line to Ekman Larson, a shot blocked in front, another shot, pad save and a beauty made there by Bernier. Creeping out of the goal with Smith, the puck back at center ice and now he's headed into the bench area as Ribeiro gets it in over the line. Doan into the slot and a shot by Verbata was blocked, cleared to the line and out by Carl Gunnarsson. Minute 24 and ticking. Long shoot in wide of the net. Bernier had that go wide. Paired by Carl Gunnarsson up along the wall. Jay McClement fighting for every inch he can get. Gets it to the line and does. Kuhlman to center. Here is a chance for McClement. Skate save made by Keith Yandel. McClement after it in the fire boards. Pushed ahead by David Moss. Now to the near wing with less than a minute to go. A shot by Troy Bodie is blocked. Another chance in front. And it is... Still there, another, what a save made by Yandel. He's made three of them. Phoenix back at its own blue line. Clears in. Sent back out again by Gleason. Mason Raymond trying to send it high. This is bouncing wide to the goal. Icing call. Jay McClement's gone weeks trying to find his 200th career point. And he had an excellent chance, but could not find the four by six. Now McClement's going to have to stay on. It would appear that they're going to get a break here because Phoenix is forced to call a timeout. Yeah, they're going to get their lineup sorted out. And Dave Tippett on the bench working out what exactly they're trying to do offensively. 34.3 seconds remaining in the third period. The Leafs will leave immediately after the game for Denver, Colorado, who are celebrating their big football win yesterday and a trip to the Super Bowl for Peyton Manning and company. And the Leafs will play there tomorrow night against Patrick Waugh's Colorado Avalanche who are having an excellent season in third spot in the Central Division of the Western Conference. With uh, 31 wins and 67 points. We watched a lot of Bernier tonight. He robs Doan right in the slot with his right pad. And he has been right on the mark tonight, right from the very start of the hockey game. That was his 40th shot against him. Vermette against McClement. McClement wins the draw. Played around the boards and out and down the ice. Going to be another icing, though. 28 times this season, the Leafs have given up 38 or more shots in a game. They may have, if they win this one, 21 victories when they've been outshot in a hockey game. They will lead the league with that statistic. But it's format that's working <laughs> and I saw the one of the real icon coaches in our game Dave King in between periods and he was just raving about the play of Jonathan Bernier saying if it wasn't for that guy we'd be winning this game as he works for the Phoenix Coyotes in development around the boards it comes to the near wing Ekman Larson cleared it in Vermont or at least uh, Raymond trying to play it out a block shot again by Gleason in front of the goal 
He is slow to get up as it's back into the center ice area. He stays out there. Now a long shot, Bernier down. And he'll hold that shot from Verbata and Tim Gleason. He may lead the Leafs in ice packs after most games since arriving here from um, Carolina. And he's done a terrific job of that. And there he is in front of the net. It was kind of like what he did against Boston the last minute as he takes one up high. Seems to be okay. And getting back to Dave King, he just said, this Bernier, I mean, he makes it look so easy. He's so calm. And isn't that the truth? Face off to his left. 5.8 seconds to go. McClemon scrum the drive goes to the side of the net breaking his stick is enough and there's the horn that ends the contest Jonathan Bernier faces 41 coyote shots the Leafs get 29 but the Leafs staked him to a nice three nothing lead and then we're able to kind of sift it home for a 4-2 victory here tonight the last time the Leafs had four losses in a row and then won five in a row, was 1967. And That's Wade, a famous year, you know, Milty. I recall that well, year. Well, Punch Imlach actually was sick. And then King, King Clancy King took Clancy over. Took yes, over, he did. And they won five in a row with King behind the bench. And then went on to win their last Stanley Cup. So Jonathan Bernier has another big night as he records his 17th victory of the season.